Challenge the act or somebody else? Somebody else, a lawyer from the Lower Bar Council. Who? Uh, I exactly don't remember the name, but sir, it was challenging the Lower Bar Council. Hey, we can't go on a conjecture, we have to go on facts. Excuse me, I'm not sure why you didn't do this. You are not asking why you didn't do this. We are only asking if someone has challenged you, so tell us. Okay, let's go. One thing is this. The other thing is, the Advocate Generals of the provinces do they, do they support the Attorney General or they have different contention? Sir, from Sir, we, are, uh, we support the Attorney General, sir. And from Sir, uh, I also support the contentions of Attorney General, please. Uh, who does not should just say so? Anybody? You support the Attorney General's contention or not? Huh? Hello. Okay. Now, can we just, uh, the judgment is dated when of the Supreme Court? We are the 2018 Supreme Court. And so it is before this law was enacted. Thirty-first uh, January 2018. 2018. 13 April 2018. Uh, now let's start with the constitutional provision. Attorney General, if you can come back. My Lord, can I make a very small point? Uh, let's read the constitution provisions, then we'll come to you. Because, my Lord, in my appeals, there is another issue also, another question of law which needs, uh, my Lord. We will come to decision. it. We will let us just see what the provision was. Sure. And we will, don't worry, we will give you an opportunity. Now, can we read uh, the relevant provisions? My Lord. Article 62. My Lord, Article 62, Clause 1. And I'll re begin by reading clause one. The whole article. G. A person shall not be qualified to be elected or chosen as a member of Majlis Ashura Parliament unless A. He is a citizen of Pakistan. B. He is, in the case of the National Assembly, not less than 25 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any electoral roll in, one, any part of Pakistan for election to a general seat or a seat reserved for non-Muslims, and two, any area in a province from which he seeks membership for election to a seat reserved for women. C. He is, in the case of the Senate, not less than 30 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any area in a province or, as the case may be, the federal capital from where he seeks membership. D. He is of good character and is not commonly known as one who violates Islamic injunctions. E. He has adequate knowledge of Islamic teachings and practices obligatory duties prescribed by Islam as well as abstains from major sins. F. He is sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest, and a mean, there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. And G, he has not, after the establishment of Pakistan, worked against the integrity of the country or opposed the ideology of Pakistan. Clause 2, the disqualifications specified in paragraphs D and E shall not apply to a person who is a non-Muslim, but such a person shall have good moral reputation. It's Article 62. 63, G. Clause 1. A person shall be disqualified from being elected or chosen as and from being a member of the Majlis Ashura Parliament if A. He is of unsound mind and has been so declared by a competent court or B. He is an undischarged insolvent or C. He ceases to be a citizen of Pakistan or acquires the citizenship of a foreign state or he holds an office of profit in the service of Pakistan other than an office declared by law not to disqualify its holder or he is in the service of any statutory body or any body which is owned or controlled by the government or in which the government has a controlling share or interest 
or being a citizen of Pakistan by virtue of Section 14B of the Pakistan Citizenship Act 1951. He is for the time being disqualified under any law in force in Azad Jammu and Kashmir for, from being elected as a member of the Legislative Assembly of Azad Jammu and Kashmir or he has been convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction for propagating any opinion or acting in any manner prejudicial to the ideology of Pakistan or the sovereignty, integrity or security of Pakistan or the integrity or independence of the judiciary of Pakistan or which defames or brings into ridicule the judiciary or the armed forces of Pakistan unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release or he has been on conviction for any offence involving moral turpitude, sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than two years, unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release. Or I. He has been dismissed from the service of Pakistan or service of a corporation or office set up or controlled by the federal government, provincial government or a local government on the grounds of misconduct conduct, unless a period of five years has elapsed since his dismissal. Or he has been removed or compulsorily retired from the service of Pakistan or service of a corporation or office set up or controlled by the federal government, provincial government or a local government on the grounds of misconduct unless a period of three years has elapsed since his removal or compuls compulsory retirement. Or he has been in the service of Pakistan or of any statutory body or any body which is owned or controlled by the government or in which the government has a controlling share or interest unless a period of two years has elapsed since he ceased to be in such service or he, whether by himself or by any person or body of persons in trust for him or for his benefit or on his account or as a member of a Hindu undivided family has any share or interest in a contract not being a contract between a cooperative society and government for the supply of goods to or for the execution of any contract or for the performance of any service undertaken by government. Provided that the disqualification under this paragraph shall not apply to a person, one, where the share or interest in the contract devolves on him by inheritance. <laughs> Provided that the disqualification under this paragraph shall not apply to a person, one, where the share or interest in the contract devolves on him by inheritance or succession or as a legatee, executor or administrator until the expiration of six months after it has so devolved on him. Two, where the contract has been entered into by or on behalf of a public company as defined in the company's ordinance, 1984, of which he is a shareholder but is not a director holding an office of profit under the company. Or three, where he is a member of a Hindu undivided family and the contract has been entered into by any other member of that family in the course of carrying on a separate business in which he has no share or interest. Or <coughs> explanation. In this article, goods... So, uh, it is skip it, it, not M disqualification. G. So we can come to M. M, M G. G. He holds any office of profit in the service of Pakistan other than the following offices, namely, again, an office which is not wholesome, whole time office remunerated either by salary or by fee to the office of Lambadar, whether called by this or any other title, three, the Qami Raza Kars, four, any officer whereof, by virtue of such office is liable to be called up for military training or military service under any law providing for the constitution or raising of a force, or N. He has obtained a loan for an amount of two million rupees or more from any bank, financial institution, cooperative society or cooperative body in his own name or in the name of his spouse or any of his dependents which remains unpaid for more than one year from the due date or has got such loan, uh, loan written off. Or, oh, he or his spouse or any of his dependents has defaulted in payment of government dues and utility expenses, including telephone, electricity, gas and water charges in excess of 10,000 rupees for over six months at the time of filing his nomination papers. Or, P. He is for the time being disqualified from being elected or chosen as a member of the Majlis Ashura Parliament or of a provincial, provincial assembly under any law for the time being in force. Explanation. For the purposes of this paragraph, law shall not include an ordinance promulgated under Article 89 or Article 128.
to when it's, if any question arises whether a member of Majlis Ashura Parliament has become disqualified from being a member, the speaker or as the case may be, the chairman shall, unless he decides that no such question has arisen, refer the question to the election commission within 30 days. And if he fails to do so within the aforesaid period, it shall be deemed to have been referred to the election commission. Three, the election commission shall decide the question within 90 days from its receipt or deemed to have been received and if it is of the opinion that the member has become disqualified qualified, he shall cease to be a member and his seat shall um, become vacant. And then 63 is disqualification on grounds How of defection. How would you distinguish actually. between 62 and 63? My Lord. My Lord, uh, now of course uh, 62 is qualification and uh, 63 is disqualification, but uh, both these conditions are applicable at the time of entry, at the entry point, which is to say that when the uh, when a candidate files his nomination papers for uh, parliament or provincial assembly, uh, must be eligible under both 62 and not ineligible under 63. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, if once a member gets elected, then again. He must no, it doesn't say elected. It says the person shall be disqualified from being elected. From being elected. So yes, pre-election. G yes, 62. To as I said, 63. G 63 also. Uh, it says from being elected. Oh, no. But uh, sub, sub sub article three says if he is a member. If he is a member, then and if exactly. if there is anything, for example, uh, now there oh, are, there uh, could be few instances. If you just let's go to 62. Certain things are uh, factual. That's right, sir. He is a citizen of Pakistan. Age. Either he is or he is not. Gee. And the Two age. is age of 25 years. And I mean, that's also fact. Either right. you and are or you're not. There's no debate right. here. And then being on the electoral rolls of a province, that is also factual. factual. Now we go to C. Uh, that's again with relation factual. to the factual. Now comes the more difficult ones. D to G. Which are, I imagine, not easy to ascertain. He's of good character. And which? Are you of good character, Attorney General? Don't answer that. <laughs> no, depends how you see me. <laughs> you know, That's what I had to say. Please don't answer that. Okay. <laughs> Not suggesting anything. No, but what? But I'm just saying, this, this actually uh, says I'm all. just saying your supporters may say excellent character yes. and your detractors may say but horrible character. subjective how yeah. you see, how you perceive what is a good character. What is good character? So it is. And, who who uh, determine it? Who will determine it? Yes. So that that these are also all open-ended. You know, I, and I, if you see D, and it goes on to say who uh, not not commonly known as one who violates injun uh, Islamic injunctions. Yeah. So here it is. You may be in absolute violation of Islamic injunctions, but not. But if known. it is not known. Yes. So, uh, okay, so it's a very strange sort of wording. That's right. Then we go to E. He has adequate knowledge of Islamic teachings. Yeah. I don't know how many will pass muster in this courtroom. Yeah. Uh, what level of Islamic teachings <laughs> we are talking about. Right. And practices obligatory duties prescribed by Islam as well as abstains from major sins. Okay, now we all pray for forgiveness of our sins. That's so right. we are all sinners in that way. He is sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest and amin. There being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. Now this is tied up with the court of law clause. The court of for instance, the cases before us were people not possessing a degree or producing a fake degree or not a recognized degree. So there is some sort of declaration that this was a stipulation. Now there is another thing inbuilt with that. The constitution never provided for a degree. Yeah. That's subordinate legislation. The constitution did not want you to be a, a, a graduate. I think that was inserted in 2008. Yeah. Uh, by Musharraf was then the president. 2002. 2002. 2002. 2002. So, but it is not one of the prescribed conditionalities either of 62 
or 63? It was perhaps introduced under clause P, sub, uh, sub clause P of uh, sub clause 1 of 63. 63 1 P, which permits uh, prescribing additional disqualifications through Can an we, act of parliament. Uh, read it again. Uh, P, 1 P, kya hai? Ji. He is for the time being disqualified from being elected or chosen as a member of the Majlis Ashura, Parliament, or of a provincial assembly under any law for the time being in force. Now, here the word time being has been used twice. Yeah. It could have said he is disqualified for being elected. Yes. So time being, yes, and it's been used. The word time being has been used twice in this thing. Yes. So it it assumes it's not a permanent disqualification. That's, I that's, don't know. That was the that's what the first usage of for the time being actually indicates. What my lord has just observed that perhaps it is a time bound disqualification which can be introduced through a statute. Okay. Now, with regard to the disqualification of इस वक्त तायात नहले केस की समाज सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जारी है आर्टिकल बासठ वन एफ के तहत तायात नहले से मुताल केस की समाज शुरू हो चुकी है चीफ जस्टिस काजी फायज ईसा की सरबराही में सात रुकनी लाजो बेंच समाप्त कर रहा है इस लाजो बेंच में जस्टिस मंसूर अली शाह जस्टिस याहिया आफरीदी जस्टिस अमीनुद्दीन खान शामिल हैं इनके अलावा जस्टिस जमाल मंदुखेल जस्टिस मोहम्मद अली मजहर जस्टिस मुशरत हिलाली भी बेंच का हिस्सा हैं दरखास्त गुजार इमाम बख्श कैसरानी के वकील साकिब जिलानी इस वक्त रोस्ट्रम पर हैं उनके साथ साथ अटॉर्नी जनरल ऑफ पाकिस्तान भी मौजूद हैं तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट में आर्टिकल बासठ वन एफ के तहत तायात महिला से मुतल केस की समाप्त इसका आगाज हो चुका है चीफ जस्टिस ने कहा कि इस मामले पर एडवोकेट जनरल का मौकफ भी ले लेते हैं आप अटॉर्नी जनरल के मौकफ की हिमायत करेंगे या मुखालफा चीफ जस्टिस ने इस्तार किया एडवोकेट जनरल ने अटॉर्नी जनरल के मौकफ की तइद कर दी तो इस वक्त समाप्त जारी है और आर्टिकल बासठ वन एफ के तहत तहयात नहली से मुतल केस की समाप्त चीफ जस्टिस काजी फायज ईसा की सरबराही में सात रुकनी लाजो बेंच समाप्त कर रहा है लाजो बेंच में जस्टिस मंसूर अली शाह जस्टिस या आफरीदी जस्टिस अमीनुद्दीन खान शामिल हैं जस्टिस जमाल मंदोखेल जस्टिस मोहम्मद अली मजहर जस्टिस मुशरत हिलाली भी बेंच का हिस्सा हैं दरखास्त गुजार इमाम बख्श कैसरानी के वकील इस वक्त मौजूद हैं साकिब जिलानी जो कि अपने दलाइल दे रहे हैं और इनके साथ साथ एडवोकेट अटॉर्नी जनरल भी मौजूद हैं चीफ जस्टिस ने कहा है कि इस मामले पर एडवोकेट जनरल्स का मौकफ भी ले लेते हैं आप अटॉर्नी जनरल के मौकफ की हिमायत करेंगे या मुखालफत जिस पर एडवोकेट जनरल ने अटॉर्नी जनरल के मौकफ की तइद कर दी है तो इस वक्त आर्टिकल बासठ वन एफ के तहत तहयात ना अहली से मुतल केस की समात जारी है सुप्रीम कोर्ट में और चीफ जस्टिस काजी फायस ईसा की सरबराही में सात रुकनी लार्जो बेंच इसकी समात कर रहा है लाजो बेंच में जस्टिस मंसूर अली शाह जस्टिस या आफरीदी जस्टिस अमीनुद्दीन खान शामिल हैं जस्टिस जमाल मंदोखेल जस्टिस मोहम्मद अली मजहर जस्टिस मुशरत हिलाली भी बेंच का हिस्सा हैं दरखास्त गुजार इमाम बख्श कैसरानी के वकील साकिब जिलानी रोशम पे मौजूद हैं प्रोविजन एंड सम्यूला बलोच basically he holds that the declaration which is referred to in 6211f has to remain in field till such time or uh, uh, till such time the declaration in the field the disqualification stands then uh, what my lord has observed uh, carries uh, there is no time limit provided under article 62 so there are no time limits as far as as my lord the chief justice had just uh, uh, gone through took, took us through uh, clauses a through g now as far as d e f so are concerned they are all uh, with, without any timeline now the question before your lordship and it was also argued in samula baloch in fact uh, all the counsel well, before first, samula first, baloch if if we consider that through samula baloch the constitution has been amended then the constitutional amendment is required as for my understanding my lord uh, it is interpretation g by my lord uh, with respect samula baloch also read something into the constitution which was not provided 
and uh, uh, like what did they read into the my lord uh, while comparing now in say, while examining 621f the court held that so long as the declaration is in the field this disqualification stands while at the same time when they were examining 631h which is under 63 and relates to moral turpitude but includes dishonesty and there is a 5 year time limit the court took a different view while examining both and it said that uh, you know because there is a personal cost price that a person has prepared by going to prison so therefore 5 years is good enough but what the court did not or with respect overlook was that in both cases the declarations are there now in 631h there is a conviction which stands Mm. it's only so it's that a, it's really a question of interpretation because what's very interesting speaking for myself if you look at 63 uh, g h and i yes. i mean most of the heinous crimes uh, especially against the integrity and sovereignty of the country and that person can be allowed to contest election where there are punishments he goes through punishments and comes out and contests the election what is a bit odd is that a civil declaration which is just for some misdemeanor like misconduct which doesn't even carry a criminal punishment absolutely that carries an absolute bar for the rest of the life that seems to be a bit odd because if you commit murder you commit treason you commit whatever you can come back and contest election but if you just forget to write something in the form uh, you you would be out forever and, and so how does one reconcile it's a matter of interpretation yes so that is what my respectful submission would be because in both in g h and also in i there is an an adverse finding against the person a declaration by a court of law against that person in those proceedings those declarations of course subsist he serves the time or whatever punishment provided by law and then he can come back in after 5 years now here by looking at 621f where there is this uh, the standard of proof is lower compared to those criminal proceedings under 631a which is beyond any shadow of doubt and that declaration has still come out beyond any shadow of doubt and here is preponderance of evidence of somewhere between the two and uh, here the person is out for him but before we go into that could you just explain to us how can any court a civil court grant declaration which is in the negative i mean how can a court grant a declaration that is not sagacious that cannot happen so how does that work i mean i have been always perplexed about this we can't get a negative declaration from any court can a court say that you not sagacious why would that happen because no civil proceedings could lead to a negative declaration it's always positive so i don't understand how a court will ever give such a declaration so then most of the courts which have given this declaration are the constitutional courts so you have that's another question case. and in those cases is the declaration absolutely clear i mean does it say that you're not sagacious or then we infer from the judgment that because you presented a fake degree as a consequence we understand that you are not a mean i mean i let me just go yes. to the language of 621f to understand what do we mean by declaration declaration and also what is a court of law because and i say this and my lord has just observed in ishaq akwani's case in 2015 a seven member bench actually framed these four questions they left it them unanswered for some other case in future and those questions were that what would be that court which is to give this, uh, this sort of declaration what what would happen then in that case they left it open sir these questions were not answered by a seven member bench so the which court would it be what procedure would it follow what would be the standard of proof and who will have the locus standi now these are the questions which are very very relevant for the per is offered for this declaration by court of law and then also whether uh, the courts exercising let's say constitutional jurisdiction who cannot record evidence where witnesses cannot be cross examined a person who against whom an allegation has been brought cannot really defend himself as is he is able to in a trial would that would the declaration so, coming so from a constitutional court I, suffice for 62 so, words so, so, the question which has been there for a while now is first of all can there be a civil court granting a negative declaration number 1 and number 2 the question is that in a constitutional proceedings where there is no evidence being taken the court has arrived at a decision that a fake degree has been for example i don't know what the other cases are fake degree has been presented by this person does not necessarily mean that he the court is moving further and saying that you are now a f- non sagacious or whatever it's simply saying in this particular matter a false degree was presented but i don't know of any judgment where they've actually gone ahead and said then as a consequence you're a fraud 
So I don't know. So is there a declaration actually coming out of the Constitutional Court also? And can they, without taking any evidence, give such a declaration about a person? My, my respectful submission is, my lord, that uh, a Constitutional Court. Now, mindful that this seven-member bench left these questions open, but then there are two judgments. Uh, one in uh, uh, in uh, PLD 2015 Supreme Court 265, which Thank is Panama you. 1, uh, mm -hmm. Justice Ajaz Abzal Khan, speaking for majority, said that a court of law for the purposes of 62.1f would be a court which can actually record evidence, which is a plenary court of original, revisional, appellate jurisdiction in civil and criminal proceedings. But Without then, recording evidence, declaration can be given? Cannot be given. Yes. And then the same... In but even a negative declaration cannot be given, even if you record evidence. Right. I That's don't right. understand That's this. Right. So. And then in Aladino Bhaiyo, the second Aladino Bhaiyo, the review Aladino Bhaiyo, uh, they re revisited the original judgment which was given in 2013, where under it was held that uh, once a declaration at 62.1f is given, it does not... Whether away, go away with the flux of time. Okay, but the declaration mein to hai na, ke person may not file his own case for declaring him I mean. Yeah. Somebody has to challenge his That's right. character. That's right. Then in Who that case, the declaration will come whether he is I mean seditious, righteous or not. Yeah. So ye declaration hoga na. Khud to ja ke nahi maang sakta declaration. Also negative as per somebody will come challenging. Usse ref paternity pe ho sakta hai shayad. Ek exception hai 42 mein. There is no other exception. Yeah. Section 42 mein to legal character koi deny karta hai to suit file hota hai na. That's right. If somebody is denying his legal character, then he can file the suit under section 42 of the Civil Rights Act. What right? Okay. Or agar aap constitution courts ke cases bhi le le na, to for example, somebody has not, for example, election tribunal says that. Uh, the uh, nomination form is not going to be So, declaration is not going to be done. It is not going to be done. Now, what is the problem? We have to say that 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 But the court has not said it. The court is not declaring that you are uh, uh, non sagacious or not a mean. But the court is simply saying you have filed a. Uh, there has been a misdeclaration in the form. So, elaborate karein, how do we actually get, where is the declaration, actual declaration from the court? So, us pe kahi par wo correction ke bhi provision hai, ab, eh, jo nomination papers hai. But your so motto declaration hai, ya koi case file honne ke baad hai ye declaration? Now, this is again very interesting because, uh, in, in, in uh, some judgments in Sher Alam's case, for example, the court says that uh, a writ for co-voronto can be filed and that obviously comes in constitutional jurisdiction. And in fact, the court can, this court can take su moto notice under 184.3 and gives... Co-voronto, article 199, it is totally different. Bilkul. The person but the has question, to show under what authority of law he is enjoying the office. That's right, sir. But to office mein jane ke baad hai, not prior to... Ji, office mein jane ke baad hoga, yes. but as as far as that declaration is concerned, question is, can that declaration be given in those proceedings or for that person has to, somebody has to go to civil court or some court which has the original jurisdiction to try and uh, receive evidence, uh, uh, allow the, the person against whom an allegation has been brought to cross-examine. come back to Article 62. Read G. He has not... After the establishment of Pakistan, worked against the integrity of the country or opposed the ideology of Pakistan. Yes. Now, if we read 62.1G on its own with the judgment of Samyullah case, the ban is lifetime ban. But, but, but if we read them together. But, but uh, yeah. But okay. Now read 63.1G. G. It's the same language, ideology of Pakistan. G. G. For propagating and here it prescribes a ban for five years. G. Or the sovereignty, integrity or security of Pakistan. No, it's the same 62.1G and 63.1G right. are more or less similarly worded. That's right. It is working against integrity or opposed to the ideology of Pakistan. That's right, sir. Now, if we apply Sabula Baloch to 62.1G, it is lifetime ban. And if we apply 63.1G, it is five-year ban. <clears throat> Unless you say 62.1G, Samula Baloch is not attracted to 62.1G. 
That could be one argument. So uh, it's it's interesting uh, what my lord has observed six, because if a person is dishonest or उसके खिलाफ मुकदमा दर्ज हो जाए और उसको सजा हो जाए तो फिर दो साल काटने के बाद पांच साल बाद वापस आ जाएगा मुकदमा ना हो और पता नहीं क्या हो और एक declaration आ जाए तो then he's gone. If he if he has been convicted and goes to jail. So he his sins are expiated. Ex, what is the word? Expiated, right? And he is okay. Yeah. Now, if he is, for instance, acquitted yeah. or is not even prosecuted, then he is lifetime banned. So I find it difficult that a court of law which has convicted a person, meaning your guilt was established hundred percent. You are banned for only five years, and if your guilt has not been established, because every criminal case has two components: conviction and sentence. That's right. You can be convicted, and you can be sent on parole, or you can be convicted till the rising of the court, or whatever it is, or maybe not. Say for good conduct, we don't convict you this time. We don't sentence you this time. We just convict you. That's right. So that will be a lifetime ban, and the person will say, "Can you please send me to jail so I can contest elections again after five years?" Yes. Yeah, I would rather the rising of the court so I can just go back after come. five years. So I, I, then, the, see, certain things are very clear. You are a citizen of Pakistan. I mean, I find okay that it's pretty clear. There may be some gray areas where you may be holding two, three nationalities, or whatever the case is, or you may have given up, or. whatever but generally age is a determinative factor it's clear and then we come to d e f and g which are vague and they are overlapping as well because it says is of good character now can any human being possibly say this on oath if he is truthful if he is truthful so it appears that as far as d e and g is concerned there is no third party declaration you know nobody is who's 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 actually saying that he doesn't have adequate knowledge of islam who's saying that he's uh, said anything against the integrity of the country so there's no third party right so how does the disqualification work on that election and then it forgets about it and then the next election he can contest i mean he once we found out, found out that um, he doesn't have adequate knowledge of islam 20 years ago and he missed the elections that time then he's now become a, a saint perhaps alim and alim. alim and then he what happens hafiz alim so ek to wo samajh nahi aa rahi lekin farak sirf ye hai ki f mein to ye hai ki ek declaration khadi hui hai third party ki to jab tak wo khadi hui hai wo chalta rahega that's what samula beloch saying samula beloch actually turns on the declaration wo hua ye ki actually 18th amendment mein ye jo declaration by court of law lane ka purpose to ye tha ki wo returning officers jo hai na wo डिटर्मिन ना करते रहे या इस किस्म का एलिगेशन कोई और रैंडमली ना आकर लगा दे और ताकि ये जो डी ई e और जी के अंदर जो हो सकता है वो एफ में ना हो पाकिस्तान के बारे में बात स्पीच कर दी बस खत्म हो गई बात अब वो इलेक्शन नहीं लड़ सकता ये देखिए कुछ लोग होते हैं तो उन्होंने फाइव इयर्स कर लिए वो कहते यस आई सीन द लाइट अब इस्लाम में भी तौबा की गुंजाइश आखिर मिनट तक है वो कह सकता है जी मुझे जैसे माय लॉर्ड ने ऑब्जर्व किया कि मुझे इस्लाम के बारे में नहीं पता था अब मैंने सारे मात मान अब लाइफ टाइम बैन उसको कर दिया कि वो फिर उस शायद हिफ्ज हाफिज बन गया हो सकता आलिम बन गया हो सकता है आप और बेहतर और हम सबसे बेहतर कुरान शरीफ समझने लगा हो तो वो और वो लाइफ टाइम बैन में आ गया क्योंकि उसको 20 साल पहले या 10 साल पहले या 5 साल पहले इन चीजों के मुतालिक इल्म नहीं था उस समयला बलोच जो है इट एक्ट एज ए गली टीम वो कहते हैं कि जब आखिरी अपील में जब आप आएंगे तो बस उसके डिसीशन से पहले तो अगर आप रिपेंटेंस कर ले तो हो सकता है वरना वंस That happens, then there is no repentance. One eighty four three में तो वैसी नहीं होता, but otherwise भी नहीं. Repentance कहाँ लिखा है? इस आप सुनने जरा. इस आप समीला बलोचे. देखें इसमें इसमें असल बात ये है कि difference हमने मालूम करना होगा 62 63 A में. What is the difference between the two? As far as I am concerned, 62 is not giving power to decide against a person. देखिए इसमें तो सिंपल ये इट इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन 63 63 में जो जो कार्रवाई करेंगे वो दिखाएंगे 62 में वो कहेंगे यू आर यू आर नॉट क्वालिफाइड वेयर एज डिसक्वालिफिकेशन इज इन 63 अगर कोई शख्स सपोज कोई काम करता है कोई गलत काम करता है तो अगर आप जी और एज को पढ़ लें 
जी और एच वो डिटरमाइन करते हैं कि कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ से जब उसको कोई डिक्लेरेशन हो ये उस डिक्लेरेशन की बात हो रही है आई थिंक सो जी आइए इस पर बात करें कि ये ये सिक्सटी सिक्सटी टू वन एफ कहाँ पे पावर देते हैं कि आप इतने टाइम के लिए डिस्कालीफाई हो इतने टाइम के लिए वो तो सिर्फ ये बताते हैं कोई शख्स पेपर सबमिट हो रहे हैं उससे पहले बता दिए कि फ्ला कोर्ट से इसको सजा हुई लिहाजा पेपर खारिज दैट्स ऑल मैटर एंड अथॉरिटी डीलिंग विद दिस मैटर हैव नो पावर टू डिसाइड डिस्कालीफिकेशन पीरियड ऑफ दैट पर्सन वो डिस्कालीफिकेशन के पीरियड तो सिक्सटी ने बता दिया ये सजा जुर्म करोगे तो इतनी सजा होगी और उस जुर्म की सजा पूरी होने के दो साल बाद जब आप निकलेंगे तो फिर आप क्वालिफाई होंगे तो ये ये आप जो पहला सवाल जो आपसे किया कि डिफरेंस आप डिफरेंस जब बताएंगे तो खुद ब खुद पता चलेगा व्हाट इज 62 एंड व्हाट इज 63 तो सो सो इफ 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 62 1f इज जक्सटपोज्ड विद 63 1h H H and H both H moral turpitude H moral turpitude है because वो उसके साथ dishonesty etc वो उसके साथ है moral turpitude being very broad और वो examine हुआ समझ लो बिल्कुल उसको अगर आप सामने रखें तो the consequence then if they are to be reconciled then the consequence is only one which is that uh, the timeline which is provided for the declaration in 63 1h must necessarily apply to the time so, to the declaration in 63 1h h mein agar conviction ho gayi because it attracted an offense and so it led to conviction then he can come back <laughs> but if it was lesser than uh, even a case where it could constitute an offense and so it, he could not be taken in a criminal case a simple declaration was given on the civil side that goes on unlimited ab yahi samajh nahi aati because otherwise then you i mean we also have to stay away from the concept of reading into the constitution but now that you have started reading in so, the is, so i was just well, <laughs> that, that is also a question so, so you must stop from reading for the book <laughs> reading in yeah, so just one, another aspect if you can attend to can you read d my lord again he is of good character and is not commonly known as one who violates islamic injunctions now please read f he is gracious righteous non profligate honest and amin there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law now ye what does this mean there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law in clause d and in clause e and in clause g yeah, these saying. words are not mentioned that's right so so either you say clause d e and g are redundant the meaningless clauses because the words there being no declaration either the same wording should have been followed and i can't at least i cannot understand the difference between good character and sagacious i mean good character is something different from sagacious it is good character different from being righteous right is non profligate what does that even mean what does yeah. non profligate mean yeah. what does it mean who doesn't spend wastefully israf yeah to good character yeah. so if you are doing wazu and wasting water you become a profligate because as the hadith of the prophet that's right do not waste water and even if you're standing next to a flowing river yeah. so then he's a profligate so and then we go honest good character every good character person is an honest person i would imagine and i mean i mean you know these are words which a muslim would never even dare utter in deference to the holy prophet that only he is and none of us are I mean that is humility and abject humility. You will never say that. Otherwise, why would you seek forgiveness for whenever someone dies? Please forgive his sins. Do we ever say he is entitled to jannat and Allah Taala grant him jannat? He never committed a sin. We don't even pray that for ourselves. No honest person will say any of these things that he is sagacious, righteous, non-profligate. Even the greatest saints in Islam. was scared when they were dying that they were scared of death because they were apprehensive of what may they be meeting in the hereafter so i don't know is this a generally a wish list kind of situation as opposed to any because otherwise everybody can if somebody if i was filing a lamination paper and if someone says he's not of good character i would not even challenge it i said i'm sure i've done something wrong in my life maybe i've done wrong yesterday so i don't know so uh, it's 
I do, this is, if you're honest and you say, right, this person is right, I'm, I am not sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest. I do not switch off the lights when I go out of a room. I waste electricity. I waste human uh, resources which the Almighty provides. So where does it end then? You can, it's, you can just, I can bring any case into that disqualify someone and I want to save someone, I can also do the same thing. That's why Should such power vest in judges and who are themselves humans? That's why uh, they critical. want a greater test for parliamentarians than they have for themselves. Does this language find mention in the oath of office of a judge that I'm not uh, profligate? Does it mention in the recommendations of a judge or it says you have to be 45 years of age, practicing law for 10 years? It could be so, so we have a lower standard than parliamentarians. Why is this language then not reflected there as well? You know, let's accuse ourselves before we accuse anybody else what they are or what they are not. So uh, either we have a much lesser test, we can't, at least I would be very scared to meet this test, terrified to meet this test. So uh, I, I, either we don't have a similar test, it's, so we have to read the constitution as a living whole and where the constitution has brought down the acts, it clearly says two years, five years, three years, two years, or it's factual, you're not a citizen, fine, that's very clear. There is no punishment here, but you're out. So without a punishment, you're out. There's no punishment. So, but suppose a person is a citizen of Pakistan, not a Pakistani citizen, but becomes a citizen of Pakistan later. Would he stand disqualified for life? Suppose he filed a nomination paper and he had another nationality or whatever, and he got disqualified qualification for life and then subsequently he said okay I've surrendered my US nationality and now I want to contest so I don't know you have to we have to read it in a way that is meaningful and we must bear in mind the conditionalities that were imposed to exclude people from this I mean the degree situation Thankfully, it wasn't there when the Qaeda was around, yeah. because he would have been disqualified. That's right. You no, know, he wasn't a graduate. Amendment come who is? Amendment. Was our two ki art ki? Yes, in 2002. Who? 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 The question is that uh, while we're looking at DE and G, which to my mind appears to be a guideline for the voters, the actual gatekeepers, and they might keep this in mind when they're voting because nobody can execute them and put anybody behind anything. So D, G, E and G to a guideline for the voters and that's never been agitated. The million dollar question is how do we look at the line no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. What do we do with this? I mean, this is my in Lord, the Constitution. If I, may, if I think I my may. lords have raised the questions. Can we read the law on declarations? What is the law on declarations? Section 42 of the yes, specific, Section 42 of the Specific Relief Act. I would imagine character. is that the only declaration that has been indicated here? No. Is no the declaration. Or law hota hai declarations ka no, specific no, relief act. Only specific relief act, section 42. Okay. Legal character ke upar jo hai na, okay. that is the only law. Declaratory suits are filed under 62 one hai. Section 42. Constitution mein raha. Hmm. Ye to law nahi hai. Ye koi challenge karega to wo to 42 mein hi karega. Negative declaration. Negative declaration concept hai na. Positive declaration is not the negative declaration. We have held in paternity cases that you cannot do negative declarations. Negative, positive. Negative, positive. Negative, negative. 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 Um, I have it before me, Mr. Jilani's iPad is very helpful. Um, discretion of court as to declaration of status or right. 
any person entitled to any legal character or to any right as to any property may institute a suit against any person denying or interested to deny his title to such character or right and the court may in its discretion make therein a declaration that he is so entitled and the plaintiff need not in such suit ask for any further relief bar to such declaration provided that no court shall make any such declaration where the plaintiff being able to seek further relief than a mere declaration of title commits to do so by the court to what is understood by court a civil court yes. under section 9 Or is it a constitutional court? No, oh, this is this is court. It's it's a civil court which where where which can uh, where evidence can be led, witnesses can be examined, where a burden of proof is discharged, and then there is an opportunity of rebuttal. Suppose in a case where I've done so, even we observe hearing a civil petition for leave to appeal or a appeal that the appellant had dishonestly filed a suit. suppose we hold that and we've held so and impose costs on him will that constitute a declaration of a court of law in terms of article 621f by respectful submission is no sir why because you are not a court where that particular issue sure. is actually conclusively determined through a trial so we could observe in other cases we could say in a criminal case that i don't believe this witness he is a liar and that witness will then be struck by 621f because it's a declaration of a court of law and what is judgment in a criminal case not he was not an accused there but he was a witness and the court says i don't trust this witness he is he, he, he i found him to lie yeah. my lord so it's you know then you can bring out every case we may make an observation against a lawyer he misled the court for instance uh, sometimes we do that my lord if i free ji and the court case if a lawyer contests election the person will say you have held that he misled the court he is of course sir, how can you allow him now to contest election he is banned for life <laughs> my lord now uh, ji sahab ek cheez aur dekh lijiye declaratory judgments ka jo supreme court ke liye provided hai na wo article 184 sub article 1 mein wo declaratory judgments hain pe aur wafaq ke darmiyan jo jhagde hote hain na usme likha hua hai ki supreme court shall pronounce declaratory judgment uske alawa ke declaratory judgment 184 and 185 mein likha hua hai no 1843 is uh, not mere declaration i mean in 1843 the court uh, goes on to uh, conduct it shizar shaukar sahab yahan baithe hain jo civil court ke mahir hain to aap bataiye na ye wali declaration kaise hogi my lord is do cheeze add kar do bata de aap 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 support kar rahe hain law ko ya oppose kar rahe hain law i am supporting the law the law i am against we want to hear from those who are opposing the law so then nahi there is somebody who said yes it's a hair about some your law yeah i mean the on kind i am a potential so yeah i think uh, in the course of proceedings and that's here the challenge i just want to uh, understand what uh, how the opposition is that's right ji bataiye my lord ye aap oppose kar rahe hain to pehle ye bataiye ki isko challenge kiya hai par main law ko is bare mein oppose kar raha hu nahi pehle bataiye ki agar hai to high court mein challenge kiya hai isko iski aapne par maine to challenge nahi kiya hai fir ab kya oppose karenge aap guzarish hai malot kyunki samiulla bloch case agar maujood hai jo ki constitution mein kar raha hai mike ek apne sabti isliye to aapse pucha na samiulla bloch hai uske baad aap samajhte hain ki law galat amend hua hai 232 galat aa gaya hai to whether you have challenged the varies in the high court or not that can be challenged before this proceeding malot because that is that question is just for alive before sonipur and and the same notice has notice has been issued on this on that question and in this proceeding the sonipur court has every authority to declare the law uh, which has been passed uh, in violating the provision of the constitution or uh, where by but abhi usman aapne kaha tha ki you are you supporting life disqualification or i am sir maine kaha tha ki i am nahi nahi usman ne kya kaha tha maine ye kaha hai malot ki jab tak samiul abloch maujood hai ye law nahi aa sakta ye law ultra wide par main case mein aapki kya hai ki disqualification life ko aap support karte hain yani mail disqualification ko assist mein is point pe karna chahta hu ki revisit हो सकता है कानून लेकिन वो इन कंडीशंस के साथ रिविजिट हो सकता है 
वो मैं आप एक देखें वजहत से बात कीजिए ना गोल छोल बातें ना कीजिए ना आप आप लाइफ डिस्कालीफिकेशन के फेवर में या खिलाफ है सीधी बात मैं लाइफ डिस्कालीफिकेशन की फेवर में उस हद तक हूँ कि अगर समूला ब्लोच प्रवेल करता है आपसे सीधी बात करता हम ये क्या सवाल जवाब दे रहे हैं आप नहीं आदर यू सपोर्ट दी प्रिंसिपल लॉ को सपोर्ट मैं इसलिए नहीं कर सकता कि लॉ अगेंस्ट द जजमेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट है अगेंस्ट दी जजमेंट इंटरप्रिटेशन री इंटरप्रिटेट हो सकती है प्रोविजन सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जजमेंट जब तक था उसके बाद पार्लियामेंट ने लॉ अमेंड किया अगर आप ये कह रहे हैं इसका मतलब है सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजमेंट के बाद पार्लियामेंट लॉ नहीं बना सकता लॉ बना सकती है स्टेचुरी इंटरप्रिटेशन के बारे में जहाँ स्टेचुट इंटरप्रिटेट हुआ चले लॉ का तो ठीक हो गया बट आर यू saying that the One principle point. settled in samula veloshi you agree with it no that i am do, i don't agree ha to i i want to say that there is some conditions for the uh, on the basis of on the basis of state decisive uh, principle ke kab wo judgment jo hai wo revisit ho sakti hai aur kya wo conditions aap aap bar bar woh cheez repeat na kare na ab aap seedhi baat humse kar nahi rahe hain Okay. जजमेंट को छोड़ दीजिए दो मिनट के लिए लॉ को भी छोड़ दीजिए हम सिर्फ आपकी राय मालूम करना चाह रहे हैं आप लाइफ टाइम डिस्कालीफिकेशन को सिक्सटी टू वन एफ सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर रहे हैं कुछ हाँ या ना तो कर रहे हैं मैं नहीं सपोर्ट कर रहा लेकिन नहीं कर रहे हैं अच्छा हम सुनना चाहते हैं कि कौन सपोर्ट कर रहा है एक सेकंड है एक सेकंड है जो है सुनेंगे आपकी वक्त पे कानूनी बात करेंगे तो करिए आ जाए बताइए एक सेकंड दैट इज सीएम मिस्टर समीला बलोच द पर्सन हिमसेल्फ सनाउल्ला बलोच रही शुक्रिया मोजर साहबान ये आपका ये केस है जी सर ये मेरा ये केस है तो लिखा है समयुल्ला बलोच सर समयुल्ला बलोच इज माई ब्रादर एंड अब्दुल करीम नौशरवानी आई एम द एग्री पर्सन बिकॉज आई कंटेस्टेड द इलेक्शन अगेंस्ट समयुल्ला बलोच कहा है अब्दुल करीम नौशरवानी सर इज माई ब्रादर बिकॉज द केस इज माइन सो उनके अटर्नी है आप कैसे आप पेश हुए थे कैलेक्टर जी मैं मैं पेश हुआ हूँ सर बिकॉज मैं एग्रीव पार्टी हूँ जो मैंने अच्छा दो हजार दो के बाद जब इलेक्शन हुए मैं उसकी तफसी में बात तफसी ना बता दे ना मैं, आप बता दे किस ग्राउंड पे आप मैं, करना चाहते हैं ग्राउंड पे सर ग्राउंड ये है कि जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जो प्रिंसिपल हैं उसके तहत सुप्रीम जो जुडिशल सुप्रीमेसी है उसको मद्देनजर रखते हुए ये ये ऐसी बातें ना करें अदालत में जुडिशल सुप्रेमेसी क्या चीज होती है मैं सर अगर आप की जाए ऐसी बातें ना करें हमसे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सुप्रेमेसी की बात सुनी थी हमने अब आप जुडिशियल सुप्रेमेसी का मैंने कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं सुना है सर ये जो नहीं देखिए कानूनी बात करें ना ये ऐसी बातें ना करें सर ये जो आर्टिकल 62 और 63 है ये कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में गुजशत 50 साल से और बिलखसूस अठारहवीं तरमीम के बाद इसमें कुछ तरामीम हुई लेकिन पर्टिकुलरली सिक्सटी टू वन एफ में तरामीम नहीं की गई ये टोटल पांच सफात पर मुश्तमिल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर बहुत क्लियरली इंट्री और एग्जिट पॉइंट दिए गए हैं अक के नुमाइंदगी के लिए इख्तियार के लिए कहने का मकसद ये है कि सर जब ये दो हजार तेरह के बाद से जब ये अगर आप कह रहे हैं ना पचास साल से ये स्टेच्यूट बुक्स पे है तो पहले क्यों नहीं कभी कोई डिस्कालीफाई हुआ मैं, मैं इस पे आ रहा हूँ सर बात ये है कि सर ये जो है 2002 के बाद से जेर बहस आया ये 20 साल से सर सुप्रीम कोर्ट और बलूचिस्तान हाई कोर्ट और दीगर कोर्ट्स में ये तफसील के साथ ये जेर बहस रहा है मौजू और इसमें सिक्सटी और सिक्सटी की बहुत वो क्लियरली केयरफुली मेटिकुलसली जो है सर इसकी तशरी की गई है मेटिकुलसली ऐसे तो ना बातें करें ना आप सर मैं पॉइंट पे आ जाए पॉइंट पे आता हूँ तो सर जब एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर जब 63 की जब बात की जा रही है कि वहां पांच साल का तयन किया गया है क्यों 62 टू वन एफ में नहीं किया गया उसकी बुनियादी वजह यह है सर जब मैं एज ए मेंबर पार्लियामेंट में जाता हूं जब डिक्लेशन देता हूं वो ओथ है मैं ओथ में यह कहता हूं कि मैं शहरी हूं मैंने बी ए पास किया है मेरी उम्र पच्चीस साल है यह जब मेरे खिलाफ जिस शख्स ने कंटेस्ट किया था जब मैंने उसको कंटेस्ट किया कोर्ट में उसकी उम्र चौबीस साल थी कलेक्शन में क्योंकि उसके पास वालिद के पास बी ए की क्वालिफिकेशन नहीं थी तो उसका क्या हुआ कि उसमें पांच छ मिस रिप्रेजेंटेशन की उसमें फ्रॉडरी की और जो डिग्री है इस जगह ये सवाल है आपसे आप ये कह रहे हैं ना कि ये जो डिक्लेरेशन जो हमें समझ नहीं आ रही सिचुएशन की वो ये है कि मैक्सिमम झूठ बोला ना उसने फॉर्म में झूठ बोल दिया मिस डिक्लेरेशन कर तो झूठ की सजा ये है कि सारी उम्र के लिए इलेक्शन प्रोसेस से आउट हो गया ये लिखा हुआ है दूसरी तरफ हम पढ़ते हैं तो अगर कत्ल भी कर दिया ट्रीजन भी कर दिया तो फिर 
بھی کچھ ٹائم گزرے گا تو واپس آ سکتا ہے یہ بات ریکنسائل نہیں ہو رہی سر یہ جو کیس آپ کا سمیلا بلوچ میں آپ کو ایک آپ کیس کو ایک منٹ رہنے دیں آپ اپنا ویو بتائیں میرا ویو یہ ہے کے بعد جب کسی شخص کو سزا ہوتا ہے تو وہ ایک استغما ہے اس کے ماتے پہ ایک داغ لگ جاتا ہے وہ دو سے چار سال قید کا گزارتا ہے پورے معاشرے میں اس کی فیملی سفر کرتی ہے فائنینشیل سفر کرتا ہے مورلی سفر کرتا ہے اس کی جاری سوسائٹی میں اس کی اہمیت اور حیثیت کم ہو جاتی ہے اس کے بعد جب وہ نکلتا ہے تو اس کے بعد اجازت ہے کہ پانچ سال کے بعد وہ جائے اگر اس کے پاس گنجائش ہے وہ ہم کے پاس جائے لیکن اس میں سر جب آپ انٹری پوائنٹ پہ جھوٹ بولتے ہیں جب آپ داخلے کے وقت جیسے آپ نے کہا دیکھیں ایک پوائنٹ لیتے ہیں چوبیس سال کا تھا آپ نے کہا کہ اس وقت وہ پچیس سال کا نہیں تھا چوبیس سال کا تھا صرف ایک ہی پوائنٹ ہوتا اس کے ڈیکلریشن پہ آپ نے اس کو چیلنج کر دیا وہ پروو ہو گیا کہ چوبیس سال کا ہے آپ کی رائے میں وہ فار لائف ڈسکوالیفائی ہو جائے گا پھر وہ الیکشن کنٹیسٹ نہیں کر سکتا از اٹ یور پوائنٹ ود یور آنریبل پرمیشن سر اب وجہ کیا ہوئی اس وقت پہلے یہی پوائنٹ ہے سر میری یہ پوائنٹ اس وقت اس لیے سنی جب نہیں گئی وہ شخص داخل ہو گیا اس نے بیریئر کراس کر لیا وہ جھوٹ کے باوجود وہ بلوچستان میں وزیر داخلہ بنا جو ابھی اس سے پہلے کیس پھر ذاتیات پہ نہ جائیے نہیں نہیں سر ہم ذاتیات کو چھوڑ دیجیے ہم آئینی نقطے کی بات کر رہے ہیں ہو سکتا ہے بہت برا آدمی ہے ہم اس میں نہیں جانا چاہتے تو آپ ذاتیات کو چھوڑ دیں سر آئین کی بات کریں آپ پارلیمنٹیرین ہے نا ہم ذاتیات پہ بہت سکتا ہے اچھا آدمی برا آدمی وہ ہمارے سامنے بحث نہیں ہم نے کریں گے کیونکہ ہم ایک جنرل پرنسپل تعین کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں اب ضنا اللہ بلوچ صاحب دیکھیں میں آپ کو بتا رہا جو ہمارے لیے کمپیریزن میں پرابلم آ رہی ہے نا ایک طرف سکسٹی تھری اے میں آپ جتنا مرضی کرائم کر دیں آپ کچھ عرصہ سزا کاٹے پانچ سال گزارے تو واپس آ جائیں ہمیں یہ پرابلم ہو رہی ہے کہ سول ڈیکلریشن میں سزا نہیں ہے کوئی سزا تو اس نے نہیں کاٹی سوائے یہ سزا اس نے کاٹی کہ وہ والا الیکشن مس ہو گیا اس اگلے الیکشن میں تو وہ آ سکے نا اب یہ کہنا کہ اگلے الیکشن میں بھی نہیں آئے گا کبھی بھی نہیں آئے گا یہ ہمیں سمجھ نہیں آ رہی کہ سول اس نے جھوٹ بولا جھوٹ کی سزا آپ نے دی کہ تم اس نامینیشن پیپر ریجیکٹ ہو گئے تمہارے تم نے الیکشن نہیں لڑا سزا مل گئی نا جو کرمنل سائٹ پہ اس کو ویسے سزا مل رہی سول سائٹ پہ یہ سزا ہو گئی اب آگے چلے نا اب وہ کیا اس نے جو ایک جھوٹ بول دیا مس ڈیکلیریشن کر دی اب وہ ساری عمر کیسے اسی طرح پھر تو ہو رہا آئین میں ہر جگہ لمیٹیشن ہے ٹائم کی اسٹوری ہے ہر جگہ تو پھر اس جگہ بھی تو کچھ ہونی چاہیے نا میں میں اس حق میں ہوں کہ ٹو تھرٹی ٹو ابھی جو جون میں میں اس حق کی بات چھوڑ دینا اگر دیکھیں اچھا ایکچولی وی ایم اسپوٹنگ از ایٹ مختوم علی خان کین وی ریکویسٹ یو ٹو سنس مسٹر مخدوم علی خان ہیز ریٹن آن دا کانسٹیٹیوشن آئی ڈونٹ نو فی از انوالو ان اینی کیس بفور اس آئی یو ان دیز میٹرس وچ کیس آئی یو این آئی فائلڈ سی ایم اے سکس آف ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی فور فار ہوم فیور آف ڈسکوالیفیکیشن اور لائف ٹائم اور نوٹ جہانگیر خان ترین مائی لارڈ Okay, now one thing which nobody has attended to yet, at least one way of interpreting the constitution is what the original constitution said. And this constitution has been, I don't know what's the correct word, changed or ravaged from time to time, what you want to use it. Can we read the original constitution as it was enacted in 1973 My Lord. and see what the constitution then said <laughs> my lord uh, i will read that provision to your lordship then would you like to do it or shall we ask the attorney general to do so as your lordship pleases the history is so we were thinking of appointing you as a michael's but you are representing a party so anyways let's uh, as your lordship ji the padhe 62 do you have the original constitution yes my lord i have and the history is traced in samiullah baloch no no uh, uh, we want to read the actual text yes my lord I'll, the I'll, text is there 85 yeah, yeah. they didn't go پاکستان B. He is in the case of the National Assembly not less than 25 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any electoral role for the election to that assembly. 
See, he is in the case of the Senate, not less than 30 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any area in a province or as the case may be the federal capital or the federally administered tribal areas from where he seeks membership. And D, he possesses such other qualifications as may be prescribed by Act of Parliament. So these troublesome provisions were not there? No, my Lord. When did they come into My Lord, by Presidential Order Number 14 of 1985, which is also called the Revival of the Constitution Order. This is General Zia. General Zia, when the martial law was coming to an end and partyless elections were soon to Is it end. ironic that a person who violates the constitution of the, uh, of the country puts in these conditions. I find that a bit troublesome, isn't it? Yes, he, he, after D, he was he of good character. If he violates the oath that he took to uphold and protect the constitution, and he destroys the constitution, it's very ironic for me that he inserts a good character, knowledge of Islamic teachings. I wonder which knowledge of Islamic teaching mandates judges to be sent home because they don't swear an oath of fealty to the martial law administrator. What is your view on that? My Lord, these are with great respect all these provisions which have been added by the RCO or the Presidential Order 14. There was, was he non-profligate? My Lord, these are matters which I would no, say... Yeah, we want your answer on this. My Lord, these are matters for divine judgment. It is, it is, these are matters for divine judgment. It's you mean to say matter of treason is for divine judgment? My Lord, no. And the treason is not an issue, but if we come to treason, then in so person, uh, martial law is, is admitted? Is, yes, is, yes. If it comes to an act of treason, then in that particular oh, case... Do you think he committed treason or not? My Lord, in, uh, in your Lordship is talking of 1977. You're talking about, yes. Your Lordship will then have to examine it. You know, we are asking your opinion. My Lord, I would be bound by the judgment of this Honorable. We are Court. asking your opinion. My opinion is different, but no, the judgment of this Honorable. Share your opinion with us. The judgment of this Honorable, honorable Court in Begum Nusrat Bhutto's case takes a different view. My Lord, my opinion. Chale, baki padh lete 63. 63. So, this was until D. Tak tha. There was no present D, present E, present F and present G. Yes, my Lord. The D... The, the and 63 was also pretty uh, succinct. Yes, it was, my Lord. G. 63 was also very limited. Yes, sir. I guess we have to do it in case. Case is my important time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. G. My Lord, 63, a person shall be disqualified from being elected or chosen as and from being a member of parliament if A. He is of unsound mind and has been so declared by a competent court or B. He is an undischarged insolvent or C. He ceases to be a citizen of Pakistan or requires the citizenship of a foreign state or D. He holds any office of profit in the service of Pakistan other than an office declared by law not to disqualify its holder or E. If he is so disqualified by act of parliament. So it was pretty straightforward and simple. It was. And RCO kind of mauled the constitution. Yes. RCO changed it and changed it in two respects. It brought in these qualifications and added a whole host of disqualifications as well. By a person who was of sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest and good character. Yes. Yes. But the point is 18th Amendment stamped on it. You see, My Lord, the 8th Amendment stamped on it? No, no, they keep, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then 18th Mr. Amendment stamped. Mr. Maghdoum Ali Khan, at least now I will speak for myself, I don't know. Wherever there are, this is one way of interpreting the constitution, and I've held it in a judgment or two, that wherever there is problem areas or difference of opinion or two interpretations possible, at least I have chosen the one interpretation which found mentioned in the original pristine constitution chosen by the directly elected representatives of the people and not martial law administrators. Why are you so scared of martial law administrators to utter these words, Mr. Maghdoum Ali Khan? My Lord, may I, may I submit that this is also the jurisprudence of this court 
in al jihad case mr justice ajmal mia took the view that if there is a conflict or tension between two provisions of the constitution one which was enacted at a time when the constitution was in abeyance and other at the time when the constitution was in full force it is the latter which will then prevail and that view has been reiterated in samullah baloch though the principles drawn from it thereafter are different so what your lordship is observing so where is it mentioned in samullah baloch my lord in in the samullah baloch case itself no i i just want to read that part yes my lord your lordship will see the constitutional principle is is identified in the samulla baloch case itself at page 435 huh? page 435 with this point that you are saying yes yes sir this point is there on page 435 this is pld 2018 supreme court 405 which paragraph are you reading paragraph 22 ji if your lordship will see there are number of judgments cited and then it says referenced by the president pld 1957 supreme court 219 at 235 235 as such the constitution must be interpreted as a whole because it is an organic document that is meant to apply to the changing circumstances of time and space consequently each provision of constitution a part thereof has purpose meaning and integral place that must be understood acknowledged and applied harmoniously it is only when a conflict between two provisions of the constitution is irreconcilable and one of such provisions was inserted when the constitution was held in abeyance then the provision which was made part of the constitution during the period of its abeyance would yield but would it apply because it after the 18th amendment having been i mean stamping it so it's not really that was a democratic dispensation at that my time. lord it was but your lordships prior to this also in al jihad's case took the view that in spite of the fact that whatever general zia had done had been validated to a large extent by the 8th amendment to the constitution this honorable court took the view that and that was in particular my lord in relation to a provision where a judge of this on of the high court declined to go to the federal sharia court and was as a result sent home their lordship took the view particularly mr justice ajmal mia that this provision was inserted at a time when the country was going through a peace period of constitutional abeyance no doubt it was validated by the 8th amendment but if when we examine it and juxtapose it with other provisions relating to judiciary this having been added at the time cannot be allowed to hold sway and that is why their lordships held that a judge of the high court cannot be sent to the federal sharia court against his will and if he refuses will not cease to hold the office of a judge of the high court so in spite of that this has been the jurisprudence of this honorable court that in spite of the validation mr mahdum ali khan but would you put validation at par with an original enactment which has been thought about carefully considered by every member of parliament a validation was also a bitter pill for the parliamentarians to swallow if you don't validate i continue so it may be that okay we are getting something is better than nothing let's at least get on with it but we are now faced with a problem so simple validation when the original constitution said something else if there are two possible ways to interpret something and more so when the what has been added is very ambiguous it i don't know why these vague words were introduced you could have simply said a b c d like every other thing is factual either it's a yes or it's a no are you all of of good character please don't answer this question but which person would say this i mean it would be a very audacious person who would say i'm every i'm honest i mean and everything and then probably he will be making other claims which will be totally uh, not permissible so simple validation is a bitter pill which has been swallowed from time to time to get democracy back on the rails would you not agree with that since you are a, we consider you a 
constitutional expert to consider validation at par with a constitutional provision or it has to be re read in the context of because this judgment also says in space and time the space then was a dictatorship either you continue another 10 years of a dictator or get some sort of a diluted form of democracy let get us back on the rails whichever is better so probably the parliamentarians we should not always condemn the parliamentarians we should see the difficult circumstances that they work under i mean they they, they are we should respect them and what would you have done let's put yourself in the position of parliament uh, make yourself a parliamentarian then that you would okay validate something which you may not be very happy with but at least get the business back on track how would you personally attend to it my lord my respectful submission is that though the earlier two judgments which i have just identified by this honorable court do not put it in the terms that your lordship has but that was probably at the back of their mind when they said that a amendment made during the period of constitutional abeyance if it is in conflict with or cannot be reconciled with the provision originally enacted in the constitution then the latter will prevail so obviously this honorable court has not treated the validation at the same level as the original constitution recognizing all the difficulties which your lordship have articulated but not articulating them in this particular manner otherwise my lord if any amendment made to the constitution eventually been made stands on the same plane as any other constitutional provision but your lordships have held that we will distinguish between constitutional provisions made during a period of constitutional so, Mr. Mr. what's your main argument is this your main stay of your argument my lord my my main argument in this particular case would be that in so far as when your lordship examines article 62 and 63 because some of these amendments as your lordship has just now noticed came in at the same time there is a relationship between the two and with great respect to this extend that samulla baloch says that 62 and 63 have to be looked at through different lenses it is with great respect incorrectly decided because when your lordship looks at 62 and 63 and the amendments came about at the same time 62 f which your lordship is looking in particular which says he's sagacious righteous non profligate honest and i mean there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law and your lordship examines it with 63 1 h he has been con on conviction for any offense involving moral turpitude sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than 2 years unless a period of 5 years has elapsed since his release they are to be read together I mean that is dependent upon 62 is dependent upon 63 63 and i would go to the extent of saying that when your lordship looks at g for instance he has not after the establishment of pakistan worked against the integrity of the country or opposed the ideology of pakistan it has to be related to h which says he has been on conviction for any offense involving moral so what therapy. does that mean i mean where, do, where does that leave these provisions 62 my lord i see effect my my submission would be that un unless there is a conviction and that would be the declaration i would be seeing not so, so so what would be what are these clauses? they go my lord if just, there is no conviction then in the case of d f e and g for example my lord d and e and f probably all will have to be related to h 63 by f, f actually talks about a declaration d e and g don't they could d be one could argue that because there is no third party declaration we can go into mm -hmm. conviction area mm -hmm. but where do we take the declaration part my lord declaration now if your lordship looks at it in terms of section some one thing which immediately comes to mind is section 42 of the specific release act yes. which talks about declaration of For a legal, legal character. character 
Now, this cannot be that kind of a declaration because as your lordships have repeatedly observed, a negative declaration is impossible to obtain. Then your lordship... Sometimes permissible, negative declaration is, is permissible sometime in some events that yes. can be granted by yes. the court. It there has been no some totally revisitation or some revisitation of Alvi Sons, mm -hmm. but otherwise that remains good law. Then if your lordship looks at 199, that also is talking of declarations being made by this honorable court, but that's in a completely different context. Mm -hmm. That is only so then what do you make out of this declaration for a court of law? My lord, I would say that the term is not used specifically in the section 42 sense of the term. Maybe it's a constitutional declaration. It's a constitutional declaration and that the declaration which the constitution is envisaging is there has been a conviction already under 63 1H. And then there is this gateway. He cannot file his papers before the returning officer because at that time the returning officer may refuse to accept them. But the anomaly, anomaly which arises when your lordship looks at 63 1H in particular and, and G and both actually, when your lordship looks at it, for instance at H, he has been on conviction for any offense involving moral turpitude sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than two years unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release. So even a conviction which is followed by a sentence of one year, 11 months does not lead to disqualification even of one day. Fair enough. So that's so, understood. So th therefore the connection which Samyullah Baloch me makes between a person being an ex-convict, suffering all his life, the stigma that he's a convict, is really not what 631H is all about. 631H is all about sentencing. If the person has been convicted and sentenced till the rising of the court, he's not disqualified at all. No, but there is a difference, you see, with the opening paragraph of section 62 and 63. My Lord, yes. need to be read yes. and harmonize. A person shall not be qualified to be elected or chosen. I mean, if you will read 63, a person shall be disqualified from being elected or chosen. So, well, wo jo usme season likhi hai, wo after conviction hai, ke agar koi convict ho gaya hai, uski saza khatam ho gayi hai, to is itne period ke baad wo election lada sakta hai. To be elected and from being elected. This Lord, is the... Correct. Yes. But if your lordship may graciously be pleased to look at clause 2 of 62, these words are used very loosely. The disqualification specified in paragraph D and E doesn't talk about qualifications. Article 62... But both are in different two. situations. No, no. My lord, article 62, two, huh. clause 2, mm. is talking of disqualifications under 62. It's not talking of qualifications. So this is very loose language which has been used. Practically interchangeable. Interchangeable language. Because so, uh, one question which I my have... D E My does Lord. not have the wording there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. My Lord, yes. When does D E and G kick in? How can they ever kick in actually in any court of law? They cannot kick in. Or they're meaningless words. My Lord. They're uh, just guidelines for they it. are exhortatory perhaps for the guidance of the electorate that watch out for candidates. So, so like first of all, you are saying that they are of no, uh, uh, there are no consequences be... which follow with D, E and F, uh, D, E and G. They, they will, my lord, D, E But and... ideally, the same wording should have been used, there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law in D, in E and in G. My lord, this, uh, this, these wordings are only find mentioned in F. This, My Lord, these were added in F under the 18th Amendment. These words were originally not there. And the reason for adding it appears to be, as the Attorney General identified, that under F, returning officers had started disqualifying people by saying, Aap chotha kalma zara suna Aap chotha kalma zara suna Is tarah ki cheeze... They can still do that in E. <laughs> They can. Yeah, they, they, they very much That's can. the problem, you see, what we don't understand is that the D, E, G are there and what do we, they're not executable as such. How, how could we, and, and so, I mean, I, I, I 
myself read them as as uh, for the gatekeepers as the voters and maybe they keep that in mind not what because it's a subjective decision my lord yes. but cannot be enforced in a court of law my lord that is what in the uh, case of isa khan khakwani one of the learned judges as my lord mr jesus faiz isa identified in sheikh rashid's case took the view that no disqualification can really take place over here these these are very open ended words and your lordship points it out in your uh, dissenting opinion in sheikh sheikh's case where your lordship identifies the seven questions which are to be dealt with by the court because that's but mr mahdu the problem is that i am facing is you can't attribute redundancy to the constitution my lord yes or to any law for that matter and then secondly you can't read into the constitution so my the lord. time frame suppose if one were to say that this just this f applies for that election that particular election which the nomination papers are rejected and it ends and that's not written so how, i mean that's the worry that i have how do we read in a time frame into it either we read them with 63 and create a larger timeline concept how, how does it work or go on the invalid validation point uh, and if i may just add words, what my learned brother has just said uh what i've understood from your submission is what you are saying samula baloch does not accord with the constitution that's the submission that's one that's your argument can we not say the samula baloch for its time was good valid judgment however since the lacuna has now been pro- provided by parliament and they've given a five year time limit both can be reconciled that was good then and now five years is if your five years have expired would you agree with that or you would not agree with no, that i would absolutely agree with that my lord my submission is that samula baloch was enacted uh, was uh, decided at a time when we didn't have this newly amended law at that time the law did not and there was no timeline set the samula baloch case was decided in a particular manner the legislature has now filled that gap in samula baloch it was observed that there is a declaration until such time that the declaration stands then the person would remain disqualified or will not be qualified now the legislation says that the period of such a declaration will not go beyond 5 years. years okay now i will ask you the supplementary question and i knew you would come here thank you now can i put it to you that section 232 2 is unconstitutional can i put this to you or not my lord uh, that is a very valid question of course your lordship can put any question there no, no yes I, I... my lord because one view can be which and which is probably the not probably in my opinion definitely the correct view that where this honorable court has interpreted a provision of the constitution and made a declaration about a provision of the constitution then on the doctrine of legislative repeal that constitutional interpretation can only be undone by an amendment to the constitution and that brings us to the question that how could the constitution be controlled by a sub constitutional legislation the constitution is talking about a declaration gives no time frame could we through an act of parliament start adding things to the constitution we can't do that my lord i would say that the declaration made by the parliament is in consonance with article 63 1h of the constitution which provides a time frame for the kind of offenses which will fall under f because so that involves conviction that's a criminal case but if you look at 63 p 1 p or whatever it is the yes, p ma'am. the last yes. one yes ma'am. the like, constitution itself allows that through a act of parliament you can regulate yes, this ma'am. provision and wherever it's so required it's given so uh, yeah, just taking it a little more uh, suppose let's imagine samula baloch was not decided and we are deciding it today my lord they just for the sake of uh, to take the argument a bit forward and we i mean let's assume everyone agrees with me 
And we say since 62.1f does not provide a time limitation for disqualification, therefore let us be guided by other provisions of the constitution including 63.1h and g where it provides for uh, uh, treason five year disqualification. So let us read, let this disqualification be for five years. Is this sound reasoning or not? My Lord, it is because your Lordship is then virtually interpreting the two provisions together. When your Lordship interprets... So at the end of the day, it depends on what is in my mind. Are you understanding? Yes, ma'am. Is the constitution so malleable that I can do whatever I want to with it? My Lord, if 62, 63, 1H was not there, let us assume there was only 62, 1F. And if the 18th Amendment had not added the words which have been added, which is declaration to the contrary by a court of law, then 62, 1F would have been a provision which really provided no timeline. And if a person was declared not to be qualified under 62, 1F, then the question would be for how long? My Lord, the question can be for that term that he has been elected or he can be re-elected immediately. My Lord, for instance, the only other constitution that I have been come across, which is a provision similar to that of Pakistan, where you cannot be elected to the parliament if you are the citizen or have acquired the citizenship of another country, is that of Australia. In the, and the Australian High Court, has dealt with this issue, no other constitution that I am aware of deals with. American constitution, you have to be an American... You have to be an American citizen, but it does not say like our, my Lord, 631C says, what acquires the citizenship of a foreign state. So a dual citizenship over here disqualifies. In the Australian constitution also, a dual citizenship disqualified. But the lordships over there have taken the view that if the person then steps down, abandons that citizenship, he can c come back in tomorrow again. And there they have also taken the view that if he has applied for uh, his citizenship to be renounced, then the constitution of our country will not be contingent on the delay or speed of the legal processes in another country. He has do done the best he can. And therefore they have said he can continue to be in uh, office. Why were you disqualified? My Lord, why have you been disqualified from the petitioner? The, the petitioner. Yes. Petitioner was the you are your client. My Lord, my Sorry. client. Yes, I was coming to that. My Lord, he has been disqualified on the ground that he had created a trust for, for the property called Hyde House. And his defense was that Hyde House was a trust the oh, misdeclaration in the nomination form, is that the allegation? Yes, but his case was that there was no misdeclaration. No, that's a different thing. I just yes. want to know what was the reason. So, so in all these cases, if you look at all these cases that were where 621 f was invoked, the, the, the misdemeanor is uh, uh, misdeclaration. Well, or maybe they have not given. Misdeclaration generically would be it. And misdeclaration in the worst form taken could be brought into age worst form moral I mean, innocently worst form it is moral turpitude and that provides for two years plus five years so that's seven years so even if suppose a person did not get convicted because there was no case filed worst to worst if the case was there he would be out in seven years so seven years period could be easily read into uh, the F clause because that's the only natural corollary. I mean, it doesn't make sense yes. otherwise. Yes, yes, my lord. And again, would there be any any incident coming out of F which which will go out of H? My lord, the well, you have made a case. Banana. Suppose Mr. Declaration, who is the khilaf, kisi ne koi criminal case hi nahi kiya. Agar ho jata, to wo do saal wo hota, aur fir uske baad panch saal hota. Yehi hai na. Is there any situation in F which would go outside H? Lord, not that I can think of. Uh, no. That's, do you think the words in F, it says, it doesn't end by a country, by a court. It says court of law. My Lord, yes. Is a court of law different from a constitutional court? 
because it could have stopped at the word court. So I just want to know, does it the off law add anything or doesn't add anything? My Lord, off law adds in the sense that probably the returning officer will not have this power. Well, the returning officer is not a court. I'm yes, just thinking in terms of section 9 courts under the CPC. Are these court of law section 9 courts or court of law because it should have said, it could have ended by saying by any court. My Lord, over uh, here, are we distinguishing between the constitutional court and a civil court of competent jurisdiction, or we are not? This, it's meaningless, uh, irrelevant. This honourable court and your lordship yourself have held that over here, the word court of law means a court of plenary jurisdiction. In Panama 1, mm. which was not subsequently followed in Panama 3, this honourable court... What do you mean by Panama 1 and Panama Panama 3? 1, my lord, was the first case with, which was decided 3 to 2. And Mr. Justice Ijaz Abdul Khan, writing for the majority, said that court over here means a court of plenary jurisdiction. Meaning Section 9 court. S Section 9 court, a court which will take evidence, which will examine the issues where a trial takes place. Or it could be civil or criminal. He, he doesn't make that distinction. And I would I would submit that if your lordship have to... Then how did that view change? In Without mentioning what they have done in, in Panama 2 and Panama 3. This Is it referred to Panama 1 and Panama 2 and 3, this aspect? No, my lord. Your lordship notices that in your lordship's judgment in Sheikh Rashid's case. Actually, that was not a judgment. It raised a number of questions. Yes, it raised a number of questions. Yes. But your lordship will see that even after Samula Baloch, different tests have been applied. The author judge of Samula Baloch was also the Chief Justice of Pakistan in Faisal Wabda's case and has taken a different view without where is, any reference to where is, where is that view? My Lord, that is re reported. My Lord, that is Mohammed Faisal Wabda versus Election Commission of Pakistan and others. My Lord, this is 2023 SCMR 370. My Lord, 370. My Lord, I have put these cases Short together order. in a bundle for ease of reference of your Lordship. And this would be... Sir, you have done it for me. Sir, these are 62-1-F judgments. Tell me first about this case. Yes, sir, it is the last tab. It is tab 20. So you are a member of this. Yes. My, my Lord is one of the members. Yes. His Lordship is one of the members. You yeah, well, said it as if uh, huh? wrong. <laughs> Can you read the relevant portion? My Lord, yes. Paragraph 4. It's a two-page judgment, really. Uh, G. Paragraph 4, page 373. The petitioner states before the court that he regrets his claim of renunciation of the U.S. nationality at the time of filing his nomination papers for the election of NA249 Karachi on 7-6-2018. He further states he had then initiated a process for such renunciation, but the certificate of loss of nationality of the U.S. was issued to him on 25th June 2018. He admitted that he was disqualified from contesting the election under Article 61-3-1-C of the Constitution on the date when he had filed his nomination papers for the election of NA249 Karachi and that his affidavit filed in the nom with the nomination paper thus contained an erroneous statement which he regrets. In order to demonstrate his good faith in remorse for his mistake, he undertakes that he will resign from the office of the member of the Senate to which he was elected. In view of the said statement and undertaking of the petitioner, the we, are of the, we are of the opinion that we need not proceed further in the matter, in the peculiar facts and circumstances of the case. And if your Lordship may see the last sentence, which is the last three lines, it is clarified that the petitioner shall not be considered disqualified in any subsequent subsequent election on the basis of the instant. The repentance is that period, that particular election. Yes. And also, but There's this is after he enjoyed the full tenure of the Senate. Yes. Yes. And then he resigned. He, he resigned. But one thing is, look, in Samula Baloch, in paragraph 6, mein, the concept of repentance is mentioned. Yes, my lord. But I don't find a finding on it then. So the yes, argument of counsel finds mention on repentance. My lord, yes. But then it is, though the judgment talks about Islamic injunctions, this concept is not discussed unless I've missed it. No, it is not discussed, my lord. That judgment is also on tab 7 of this very bundle. So are you repentant? 
if you don't let him go and you don't take criminal proceedings then there has to be some mechanism because if you take criminal proceedings the mechanism is 7 years but if you do not take criminal proceedings then there must be some way out also because it's short of that because nobody was bothered to take the person on for that misdemeanor so and i mean this this sadumali khan but i think can we go back to uh, faisal wafda's case please my lord yes you said samula is not mentioned samula is mentioned there is mentioned zara usse pehla wala padhne therefore from bilkul us paragraph mein mentioned it's mentioned but 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 not followed because islamabad no, just so padhne zara sir therefore it was concluded my lord usse agar zara upar aap dekh le the islamabad high court found that the petitioner was disqualified pursuant to the case reported as speaker the national assembly of pakistan versus habib akram for submitting a false affidavit hence no declaration was required therefore it was concluded that the consequences given in case reported as samullah baloch and others versus abdul karim nosherwani would follow by finding that a formal declaration by a court of law was not required to disqualify the petitioner under article 621 f of the constitution the impugned judgment has in its para 11 12 and 13 therefore misconstrued both habib akram and and the samullah baloch case so they say it's been misconstrued and resultantly the impugned judgment is legally not sustainable I, I, how do you reconcile the two the this judgment and uh, samullah baloch my lord if samullah baloch no, no, how do you reconcile the same two judgments by the learned same judge my lord my my submission is that if samullah baloch was strict, strictly followed there was no way out but to disqualify mr faisal babda and islamabad high court life for life because islamabad high court had correctly decided the case he, is, he will be disqualified because because of his corrupt practices who my lord the, the, the person who gives false statement yes ma'am corrupt practice defined in uh, section 167 of the election laws my lord yes. but for that declaration there must be criminal criminal proceedings as provided in section 174 yes penalty for corruption or corrupt practices saud ko saza honi chahiye court se ji ji court means criminal court your lordship is absolutely there is no right. declaration from the court can person be still called as a corrupt practice my lord that, practice? that is my submission that 621f the declaration which they thinking about is the declaration under now the election act 2017 previously the representation of people act 1976 and the words used over there were false statement and yes. false declaration yes so and punishment for punishment the court criminal court yes. there must be a fair trial article 10a And there after if the court declares that the person has committed uh, and, and an act that, of and practices. that is why your lordship will have to read 62 once once yes. that declaration is made then under 62 if somebody shows at the time of submission of papers that this person is disqualified is not qualified to be elected his papers can be rejected whether in 62 when we assume ke period of uh, disqualification can be made or not my lord my humble submission is are, are you also in this case mr mohammed yes are you also in this case my lord i am assisting mr mohammed bakdu mari khan in the same matter my lord okay sir i was counsel we we wanted to hear the other version as well we, we, because all of you seem to be Uh, on the same side in a way so we wanted better articulation of the contrary viewpoint who would canvass that viewpoint 
anyone in the court who will canvass the viewpoint in, with some level of seriousness. <laughs> Sir, if, if you allow me, just no, no, no. Aap, no, 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 no. Anyone in this courtroom who wants to canvass the contrary viewpoint with the level of seriousness, we would like to hear. Because you're an attorney general and most of them are just saying what we are on the same side. Oh my Lord, way. I would like to because uh, submit. Kaun bol rahe? From Lahore. Khuram Raza from Lahore, my Lord. Okay, then you please make yourself attend here. We don't want to hear important cases on video link. If you are serious about this case, come to Islamabad. My will, my Lord, I will. سپریم کورٹ میں آرٹیکل باسٹھ ون ایف کے تحت تاہیات ناہلی سے متعلق کیس کی سماعت جاری ہے چیف جسٹس قاضی فائز عیسیٰ کی سربراہی میں سات رکنی لاجر بینچ اس وقت سماعت کر رہا ہے لاجر بینچ میں جسٹس منصور علی شاہ جسٹس یاہیہ آفریدی جسٹس امین الدین خان شامل ہیں جسٹس جمال مدوخیل جسٹس محمد علی مزہ جسٹس مسرت ہلالی بھی بینچ کا حصہ ہیں آپ کو آگاہ کریں یہ سماعت اس وقت جاری ہے آرٹیکل باسٹھ ون ایف کے تحت ناہلی مدت پانچ سال مقرر کرنے کے حق میں ہوں یہ کہنا تھا مخدوم علی خان کا انہوں نے کہا کہ سوال یہ بھی ہے کہ اٹھارہویں ترمیم میں آرٹیکل باسٹھ اور تریسٹھ پر مہر لگائی یہ کہنا تھا جسٹس منصور علی شاہ کا چیف جسٹس نے کہا ایک مارشل لا ایڈمنسٹریٹر کیسے آئین میں اہلیت کا معیار مقرر کر سکتا ہے شعیب شاہین مارننگ وڈ ہی بی کینوسنگ دا کنٹری ویو پوائنٹ شعیب شاہین صاحب چلے گئے Mr. Babur Awan supported the lifetime ban in the Samuel Law of Baloch case, so he might be a person. Who is talking about? Who is talking about? Mr. Kayyub, what is talking about? Mr. Babur Awan in the Samuel Law of Baloch case. What about yourself? What about yourself? What about yourself? Which view are you supporting? Lifetime ban? Malad, I am supporting the law. I am against lifetime ban. اچھا آپ کے ساتھ جو کھڑے وہ کیا کہتے ہیں وہ اپوز کر رہے ہیں آپ آئیے ذرا اسلام بابات ذرا اپنی آپ ہمیں دیدار کرائیے وی ڈونٹ ٹو مس اینی ویلیوبل ورڈ اٹرڈ بائی یو سو پلیز بی ہیئر وی ول ناؤ بی ایڈرننگ دس کیس اینڈ وی ووڈ لائک ٹو می بی وی اپوائنٹ سم پرسن فرام دی ادر سائڈ اف وی کین سیو آپ بلکہ اگر آپ کو کوئی اور سپورٹ کر رہا ہے اس کو بھی ساتھ لے کے آئے لاہور سے بس بڑھ کے لیے نمبر میں کون ہے کیس میں صبح کا کیس تھا یہ سید ازغر حسین سبزواری یہ کیس ہے کاشی محمود کا آپ کس پوائنٹ آف ویو کو سپورٹ کر رہے ہیں کیونکہ یہ آپ نے صبح کا کیس یہ ایشو ہے آپ کے کیس میں آپ لائف ٹائم بین سپورٹ کر رہے ہیں یا نہیں میں تو یہ کہتا ہوں کہ نہیں سمپل بتا دیں لائف ٹائم بین اور فائیو ایر بین اور نو بین لائف ٹائم بین لائف ٹائم بین سو ماشاءاللہ آپ خود ہیں تو آپ آتے ہیں نا سامنے ہم آپ بار بار پوچھ رہے ہیں نہیں دیکھیں ہمیں معاونت چاہیے نا کہ اچھی بات ہے کہ آپ ماشاءاللہ سینئر وکیل ہم بھی ور لکنگ فور سم سینئر کاؤنسل ٹو کینویز دی ادر پوائنٹ آف ویو ایز ویل سو وی کین انڈرسٹینڈ اٹ پراپرلی خیر آپ نے ساری باتیں تو سن لی آپ بیٹھے ہوئے تھے نا صبح سے نہیں نہیں سن لی نا ساری باتیں ہم آج جرن کریں گے اب تو تین بج گئے ہیں تو یہ لوگ بھی آ جائیں شاید ان کے لیے کل مشکل ہو آنا پرسوں پہ رکھ لیتے ہیں پھر یہ کیس ٹھیک ہے اور اگر آپ کوئی اینی ون کین سپو آپ کس کا نام تجویز کریں جس کو ہم مائکل بنا دیں کیونکہ دوسرا کینویس کریں ویو پوائنٹ مائیکل تو خیر نیوٹرل ہوتے ہیں مگر کیونکہ وی ہیو دی سینئر کاؤنسل ہیئر آلریڈی دا پریزیڈنٹ از ہیئر مسٹر مخدوم علی خان از ہیئر سر نمبر آف ادر اٹرنی جنرل از ہیئر آپ بھی ادھر ہو صدیقی صاحب ہو سکتے ہیں اس 
case, Mr. Munir Malik was amicus. He was amicus then. Then we saw these. There were number of Mr. Ms. Asma Jangi was there. Munir Malik was amicus. Whether he will be how well he is. Would you link some? In Samula Baloch. No, but I thought the respondents would be opposing this. The respondents in these cases would not be opposing the uh, would be supporting the lifetime ban. Mr. Matum Ali Khan, you won everyone over. <laughs> so all the respondents are now against the lifetime ban. I don't understand. So who's in who? Fact, in fact, my lord, the uh, in my uh, the opposing side yes, they no. were initially were of the fact that it must be a lifetime. Prior to that, in 2018, we are the first. Those who are making out that we should not be given a lifetime here for the five years. So only one thing is this, my lord. The whole uh, scenario. I want to just add one thing, that is that a declaration and the conviction. These are the two words which are very necessary to be adjudicated by this honourable court. The one thing is this, that the conviction which has been maintained by any criminal court, that has to be given. Uh, a kind of a, um, the, the seal of legality may be coming from the election commission of Pakistan because in that the original trial court has to send the record of that case to the commission so that afterwards that can be come into the force through the legality that next time ab ek aadmi ko saza ho gayi ek aadmi ko for two years under 199 200 of the rupa or the now present election act or under 471 that conviction will thereafter be sent to the by that court to the commission election commission the election commission will then going to file a complaint against the aap mukhtasar baat kar rahe hain na aap apni takreer kar rahe hain kuch batae kya aap kehna chahte hain sir baat sir f1 f ki jo proceeding start hongi wo election commission ki complaint se start hongi मैं ये कहना चाहूँ इसका फायदा क्या इस बात से ये फायदा है कि बगैर सजा के आप कहते हैं कि बगैर कोर्ट के कमीशन के आप कहते हैं कि डिक्लेयर किसी को नहीं किया जा सकता नहीं सर नहीं कोर्ट और कोर्ट वो कोर्ट जो इलेक्शन कमीशन को फिर भेजेगी और वहाँ से कम्प्लेन इलेक्शन कमीशन की कम्प्लेट भी हो सकता है ये आप सिक्सटी टू वन एफ के ऊपर पोस्ट कन्विक्शन जी सर सनाउल्ला बलोच साहब ये देखिए बहुत पेचीदा आईनी कानूनी मसला है यकीनन आप पार्लियामानी मेंबर रहे और अच्छी तरह से आईन को समझते हैं मगर हम आपको मौका देते हैं कि अगर आप कोई वकील करना चाहें क्योंकि आप सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं ना लाइफ टाइम बैंक को तो क्योंकि ये इसमें जरा हमें तशरी करना होगी तो जरा यकीन आपकी महारत है पार्लियामानी महारत मगर ये जरा बहुत टेक्निकल इशूज भी हैं तो हम आपको एक मौका भी देते हैं अगर आप किसी वकील को करना चाहें आपकी मर्जी है तो आप कर लीजिए ठीक है हम आपकी बात हम नोट कर ली मगर वो देखें फिर हमने जितने बहुत सारी आर्गूमेंट डिस्कशन यकीन आपने सुने होंगे तो आप अगर कोई करना चाहे वकील हम कर लें तो हम परसों पे फिर इसको रखते हैं परसों केस साढ़े ग्यारह बजे एक मैं सर इसमें इसमें डिस्कालीफिकेशन इज परचुअल एंड फॉर लाइफ इसीलिए तो हम चाह रहे थे ना वंस एंड फॉर ऑल सुप्रीम कोर्ट बैठ करके ये तयन कर ले बिकॉज एक आर कुछ करें दूसरा कुछ करेगा अच्छा मिस्टर मखतूम अली खान वन अदर इशू माई लॉर्ड वन इज यू नो यू विन ऑल और लूज ऑल वन इज द मिडिल वे द मिडिल वे इज दैट अल समरेज was uh, the law undid its effect can we have the list of those cases where a non obstante clause irrespective of anything held in a judgment and they were sustained because that could be the middle way that we don't touch the judgment but now that the law has come it occupies the uh, legislative domain this is one aspect the other aspect which has not been touched upon is that we have only read the constitutional provisions so far these most of these cases deal with the earlier election laws which was ropa representation of the people's act 1976 did that law or the election act of 2017 provide uh, any term for disqualification or it simply reproduces the language of the constitution because i am familiar with ropa i am not so familiar with the subsequent enactment of 2017 so if you can consider those as well that does the law say anything at all and the third thing which i want you to attend to is 
did either law, ROPA or the Election Act of 2017, oh, no. prescribe a period of disqualification which was not mentioned in either 62 or 63? Uh, are these? Are you clear with the queries? Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. And I have these every for everybody else as well. These queries uh, they can attend to. My, my lord, I, I, I and I will I will request any of my uh, colleagues if they want to put a particular query that you all can come prepared on that. My lord, my lord with one request and leave of your lordship. Those bundles are also ready, that list is ready. Your Lordship will have to allow me to find a couple of more bundles. You're wasting a lot of paper. Which bundles? The list of case law I have made. Yes, it's all for all. Yes, it's all for all. We have given you a NAB case that we have iPads. Save paper. My Lord, this issue is actually bad. I have already made paper books, validating the curative legislation on the case law. So, you are getting a chance to get a chance. If there is any other question, any of my colleagues want to ask, not you, I am saying, I am requesting my colleagues to come. You are getting a very serious question of you. Briefly, my Lord, the citations are already there in the CMA which I have filed, but these will be submitted separately as well. Please attend to the question of repentance which Samula Baloch specifically specifically records so ये जरा आप वो भी आप जरूर देख लीजिए मलाड एक बड़ा सीरियस क्वेश्चन ऑफ लॉ है इन्हीं अपील्स में जो जिस पे मैं आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट माय लॉर्ड्स टू आल्सो एडजुडिकेट एंड दैट इज व्हाट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ सस्पेंशन ऑफ सेंटेंस ऑफ अ कंविक्टेड पर्सन इस वन थिंग वी वी ऑलरेडी नोटेड इन आर ओरिजिनल ऑर्डर which was a three-member bench order. Of course, if the, my colleagues want to add to it, that we will stay clear of criminal cases, pendency. We are just going to restrict Lord, on qualification and disqualification. Lord, judgments, because the elections are... So, this is not the case. My Lord, that judgment is in his appeal and it can't be sustained because that, is, that judgment is in violation of a number of judgments of the Supreme Court. That judgment is in effect. We are in principle of law. We are in individual cases. We can listen to them and listen to them. We can listen to them. If we listen to them, we can listen to them. 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 सिर्फ प्रिंसिपल की मैं बात कर रहा हूँ वो उन्होंने रिडंडेंट कर दिया है आर्टिकल त्रेसठ वन एच को जो हमने अभी बात में सुन लेंगे आपको आप जो कंसाइज स्टेटमेंट दिया नंबर क्या होगा माय लॉर्ड उसका मेरा नंबर है जी एक सीएमए नंबर एट है माय लॉर्ड और इसपे केस लॉ भी माय लॉर्ड मैंने सारा जो मैंने कोर्ट किया हुआ मैंने उसकी पेपर बुक्स भी बनाई हैं माय लॉर्ड जर आपकी सीएमए कौन सी माइन सिक्स माय लॉर्ड सो व्हाट वी डू टुडे विल ऑब्जर्व लाउडली and that I'm sure will be recorded if anyone wants to canvass the contrary point of view. Not to come and make a speech, but attend to the constitutional provisions and the law, we are ready to hear it. The contrary view being there is a lifetime ban. So because most of you are in support of a five-year ban or no ban at all. So uh, that offer is open to everybody. If we consider, we will appoint Amicus as well, but, you know, at short notice, whether they can render even that assistance or not, because this has to be wrapped up very quickly one way or the other, because every returning officer should not be left confused what he has to do. I'm sure you all agree to that extent. Whatever it is, it should happen once and for all. And Alot, my CMA number one for stay is fixed today uh, regarding the RO in civil appeal number 1946-2023. We've been disqualified. RO, my Lord, uh, he is, uh, uh, RO has held that he is disqualified for life. Yeah. Regardless of section 232 to then and regardless of appeal. orders passed by my Lord. We'll see. 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 We'll see.
issues are identified but but left unanswered so if my lords and this is also for posterity because uh, uh, this declaration of law now we are looking at the time limit which is to be applied to this declaration of law but how this declaration is to in fact be given how is also something very important citation. 2015 supreme court pld 2015 supreme court 275 it's half khakwani versus Mian Nawaz Sharif and page 283. I think do it in line two. Paragraph four. Do we have time to clean it for? Concurring in a judgment, my lord, in Roshan Ali Brero's case, your lordship has also raised that similar question while dissenting, my lord. That question is still part, my lord. Which one? It is appealed to the future, my lord. This is 2019 as CMR. Yes, this is 2019. Uh, this is my lord. Uh, 2019 as CMR. 1939. 1939. So the appeal to the future are we the future? Yes. This is the so now, now, now is a good time, sir. Shall we? Is me written here? या या आप में भी अपील टू द फ्यूचर कर दे अच्छा हाँ इसमें लिखिए सी पी एल ए नंबर टू सिक्स एट जीरो ओब्लिक टू जीरो टू थ्री दी पॉइंट रेज इन दिस पिटिशन आर द सेम एज विल बी आर बींग कंसिडर्ड in the cases in civil appeal 981 oblique 2018 and other cases fixed before the seven member bench accordingly this case to be fixed along with the set cases as well full stop the नंबर अच्छा ये हमें एक चीज भी बता दीजिएगा ये हमें बिकॉज दे शुड नॉट बी क्रिएटेड एन इम्प्रेशन विच अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी के नॉट कंट्रोल सोशल मीडिया और इवन मीडिया बट फॉर एक्यूरेसी सेक हु इज कंटेस्टिंग विच पोलिटिकल पार्टी सो लेट इट नॉट बी परसीव्ड एज दिस इज फॉर ए पोलिटिकल पार्टी और अगेंस्ट ए पोलिटिकल पार्टी वी आर ओनली कंसर्न विद द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनैलिटी एंड द लीगैलिटी ऑफ द मैटर सो आई रियली डोंट नो दीज नेम्स विद द इंडिपेंडेंट कैंडिडेट्स और द थिंग सो इफ समन कैन गिव अस ए लिस्ट ऑफ हुज वेयर सो दैट वुड बी हेल्पफुल एंड वील मे डिस्पेल द नोशन दैट इट इज फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर कॉज विच इज नॉट आर कंसर्न इन द लीज क्या लिखा है हाँ इसमें लिखिए दी लर्निंग अटॉर्नी जनरल एंड दी एडवोकेट जनरल ऑफ द प्रोविंसेस स्टेट दैट दे सपोर्ट the कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनैलिटी एंड लीगैलिटी ऑफ सेक्शन टू थर्टी टू विद इन ब्रैकेट टू ऑफ द इलेक्शन election elections act there is an s elections act 2017 full stop uh, a number of uh, petitioners oppose kon kar rahe aap most of the petitioners oblique uh, most of the uh, most of the council representing petitioners oblique uh, appellants oblique applicants uh, support the contention of the learned attorney general and the advocate generals uh, whereas aapka naam likh de usman kareem in cma cp 684 uh, aur kaun oppose kar rahe aap 880 ca 880 naam apna okay. bataye नाम बताइए खुरम रजा मैन मिस्टर खुरम रजा एंड मिस्टर खुरम रजा इन इन सी एट एट्टी एट एट्टी अमली फिफ्टीन स्टेट दैट द लाइफ टाइम इट शुड दैट इट इज अ लाइफ टाइम बैन अच्छा सब्जारी साहब भी का नाम पहले लिख दें सीनियर काउंसिल है ना सीनियर काउंसिल का पहले नाम लिख दें सब कैनवेस दी कॉन्ट्री व्यू पॉइंट दैट इट इज अ लाइफ टाइम बैन फुल स्टॉप दी 
a number of council are appearing from other stations through video link and they are requested that in view of the constitutional importance of the matter it would be better if they are in attendance at Islamabad so that their submissions can be properly heard and understood. First of all, we also welcome any senior counsel who wishes to assist this court to do so with precise constitutional and legal submissions supported by applicable case law. It will be fair to a Micus or not. Uh, can you suggest a name that we can appoint in who's available at Islamabad or Pindi? Kalvi Hassan Sahib is a senior vakeen and if someone else wants to come to Islamabad, I don't know what this is. What do you think about Kalvi Hassan Sahib? What do you think about Kalvi Hassan Sahib? فارمر جائز آف آئی کورٹ لاہور یا موجود کوئی اسلامباد پہ باب ہم ان کو لاہور سے بلائیں کسی کو اسلامباد میں ہوتے ہیں کون انہی میں ہوتے ہیں کون مولوی انوار الحق صاحب مولوی انوار الحق صاحب ٹھیک ہے ان دو کو کرنے My Lord, he is not enjoying very good health these days. He is having issues with his health lately, my Lord. مولوی انوار الحق نہیں ہم ایسا کریں ہو سکتا ہے میں پوائنٹ کر لیں بکاز وہ کینن کی طبیعت ٹھیک نہیں ہے but anyways if someone wants to come and assist on a legal point even if they are not parties they may come and do so سنناولہ صاحب کو ہم نے already کہہ دیئے مسٹر سنناولہ سنناولہ بلوچ states that he represents his brother Samula Baloch and supports a lifetime ban. However, since he, how he is, uh, since we are adjourning the matter, he is granted an opportunity to engage counsel if he elects to do so, or or be properly authorized by his brother. ठीक adjourn to परसों की तारीख दे दें जुमेरात की at eleven thirty. ठीक है आज अब we are planning to conclude on 11 January, so that be precise as far as possible. And those questions you have, we will not reproduce in the thing. We will just leave it like that. Anything anyone wants to add? My Lord, only this that if your Lordship is willing to consider as far as Karachi, then Mr. Faisal Siddiqui can yeah, be a choice. That's the name that we think. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Salaudi Nehmer Faisal Mr. Siddiqui. Salaudi Nehmer, Mr. Faisal Siddiqui. Unless they're in one of these cases. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we have will to check with them. We will just uh, we may add some uh, micros. <laughs> Ah, yes, that's a, yes, yes. So we will see availability and we may appoint and you can mention them if they just want to come themselves. We hear them also. General loyalty kind of counsel. No, but my lords may also then consider Mr. Ashtar al-Saf Ali because he had a certain, he was the attorney general when this case was argued. That view is already there. I know. But we were looking for the alternate view, the other view. We need opposite view. Thank you everyone. Thank you man. گفتگو آپ نے حیثا کر رہے تھے آرٹیکل باسٹ ون ایپ کے تحت آیا تحلیل سے متعلق سماعت چار جنوری تک ملتوی کی گئی ہے کیس کی سماعت جمعیرات کو ساڑھے گیارہ بجے تک ملتوی کر دی گئی ہے آرٹیکل باسٹ ون ایپ کے تحت تحلیل سے متعلق سماعت چار جنوری تک ملتوی کی گئی ہے کیس کی سماعت جمعیرات کو ساڑھے گیارہ بجے تک ملتوی کر دی گئی ہے آرٹیکل باسٹ ون ایپ کے تحت تحلیل سے متعلق سماعت گیارہ بجے تک ہوگی آرٹیکل باسٹ ون ایف کے تحت آیات نہلی کیس مطلق کیس کے سماعت شروع ہی چیف جسٹس قاضی فائز عیسیٰ کے سربراہی میں ساتھ رکنی بینچ نے یہ سماعت کی لارجر بینچ میں جسٹس منصور علی شاہ جسٹس جاجا پریدی جسٹس امین دین خان شامل تھے جسٹس جمال مندو خیل جسٹس محمد علی مظہر جسٹس مسرت حلالی بھی بینچ کا حصہ تھے 
چیف جسٹس نے کہا ثناء اللہ بلوچ صاحب یہ بہت آئینی اور پیچیدہ مسئلہ ہے ہمیں آئین کی تشہیر کرنا ہوگی چیف جسٹس نے کہا ثناء اللہ بلوچ صاحب آپ کسی کو وکیل کرنا چاہیں تو کر لیں چیف جسٹس نے کہا مخدوم صاحب کیا آپ کسی ایسے فریق کو جانتے ہیں جو تاحیات نا اہلی کا حامی ہو شامل کریں گے نیوز ہیڈ لائنز آئین میں نا اہلی کی مدت کا تعین نہیں اس خلا کو عدالتوں نے پور کیا دیکھیں گے اصل آئین اس بارے میں کیا کہتا ہے ہر وقت پارلیمنٹرینس کی مذمت نہیں کرنی چاہیے چیف جسٹس قاضی فائزیسا کے تاحیات نا اہلی کیس میں ریمارکس جسٹس منصور علی شاہ نے پوچھا سوال یہ ہے کہ کیا الیکشن ایکٹ میں دی گئی نا اہلی کی مدت آئین سے زیادہ اہم تصور ہوگی ایک شخص کو ایک بار سزا مل گئی تو بات ختم کیوں نہیں ہو جاتی کیسے ہو سکتا ہے کہ سزا کاٹ لینے کے بعد بھی کبھی انتخابات نہ لڑ سکے اٹارنی جنرل نے کہا جب تک عدالتی فیصلے موجود ہیں تاحیات نا اہلی کی ڈیکلریشن اپنی جگہ قائم ہے نواز شریف کی تاحیات نا اہلی کے فیصلے پر نظر ثانی ہونی چاہیے عدالت تاحیات نا اہلی کی تشریح کے فیصلے کا دوبارہ جائزہ لے اٹارنی جنرل اور ایڈوکیٹ جنرل نے الیکشن ایکٹ میں ترمیم کے مطابق پانچ سال نا اہلی کی تائید کر دی We must bear in mind the conditionalities that were imposed to exclude people from this degree situation. Thankfully, it wasn't there when the Qaid was around yeah. because he would have been disqualified. That's right. No, he wasn't a graduate. <laughs> الیکشن کے لیے جو اہلیت بیان کی گئی ہے اس زمانے میں قائد اعظم ہوتے تو وہ بھی ناہل ہو جاتے صادق اور امین کے الفاظ کوئی مسلمان اپنے لیے بولنے کا تصور نہیں کر سکتا میں کاغذات سے نامزد کی جمع کراؤں اور کوئی کہے یہ اچھے کردار کے نہیں تو میں چیلنج نہیں کروں گا چیف جسٹس کے نا اہلی کیس میں ریمارکس کہا اچھے کردار کے بارے میں کیا وہ ججس فیصلہ کریں گے جو 